Hey guys, what's going on? It's Clever Ticky, and in this video we're going to learn about include and require PHP language constructs. Okay, so this is a basic syntax of how these two can be used in PHP. So, if we're going to include a PHP file from within our HTML document, for example, we would use the PHP uh, opening and closing tag, and within with it we'll have our PHP code. Now, the include and require are both language constructs, which means we can use them with or without the round brackets. So here I'm using the include without the round brackets and I'm following it with the actual uh, file name that I want to include, which is one.php, and I've surrounded with surrounded the file with uh, single quotes. And uh, so suppose our file had just one variable named name and it had the value string value of vova and when we output that text hi this is variable name we'll have the output hi this is vova because we have included the one that php file which had the name variable and now the variable is showing up in our file where we are including from Okay, so as you can see, require works in exactly the same way, doing the same thing. We're including a file to that PHP, and it has the has same variable named name with a different value, Roma. And when we output that, we have, hi, this is Roma. So these two work exactly the same. Uh, when, uh, when it comes to syntax, but they are slightly different as you can see here. When using include statement, the script will continue to run if the file is not found. So just use the included if uh, if the PHP file that you're including is not required by the application, just as the word implies. On the other hand on the other hand, require will terminate the script and give you a fatal error if the file is not found. So use require when absolutely required when a file when a file that you're including is absolutely required by the application okay so this is the basic syntax and this is pretty much uh, most things that you need to know about include and require but let's go ahead and dive a little bit deeper and see how these actually work in action okay so I've created two files here one of them is named game.php and this is the output here on the right hand side and I also have welcome.php and this is the output here as well so I have them in two different tabs in a browser okay so to get things rolling here let's go ahead and create some random variables inside of our game.php file okay so I'm just gonna create like three variables here one of them is gonna be string uh, I'm just gonna create the game name which I really like the Witcher 3 and provide a cost and another variable which is the developer <clears throat> okay so three variables is gonna be enough for now and from the welcome.php I'm just gonna say some random welcome message like welcome to our PC video game review website and then I'm gonna use the include construct to include the game.php in our file and this is assuming that both of these files are in the same directory if they're not you'd have to specify the complete directory for your file that you're including okay so now that I've included game.php in the welcome.php file and uh, something okay so I'm gonna view this file it's actually a welcome. I don't know why it's showing game, but anyway. Okay, so now that I've included game.php, all the variables from game.php become available in the welcome.php. So I can go ahead and output output those variables. Okay. So I'm just gonna type some random message developed by developer. You may purchase the game at amazon.com for cost okay so now let's see what happens and as you can see 
Welcome to our PC video game review website. Today's feature game is Witcher 3, The Witcher 3, developed by CD Projekt Red. You may you may purchase the game at Amazon for 3560. And so those variables that we're including uh, become available in the welcome.php. So that's pretty uh, easy. Now, if we're going to include Basically, all variables will have variable scope from the line from which they're being, being included. However, functions and classes which are defined in the file that has been included have global scope, meaning they'll be available anywhere in the program, including inside other functions and classes. Okay, so here's what I mean. Let's create a function, just a basic function inside of our file that we're including called message, for example. And it's just going to have a simple message like Welcome to our PC review webs review website. Okay, so in, if inside the welcome, let's just delete this. I had another uh, function, and uh, let's name this function welcome. Okay, so if I tried outputting these variables inside the welcome function, like let's say name. Um, let's just go ahead and delete this. And then I call the function here. As you can see, it's showing undefined variable name. That's because variables that are included have a variable scope, which means they're only available from a place where they're included. So if I included this file here within the function, all of a sudden this variable would become available because we're including it from the function local scope as opposed to global scope outside the function. Okay, so that's how variables behave. Now, if I wanted to use this function here, message, I could actually use it inside of welcome because See, welcome to our PC review website, which is a message that's been printed here. That uh, That is because all the functions and classes that are being included have global scope, which means they'll be available inside and outside the function. So I can also put this message, I could put it outside the function and it will still work. So that's the difference between variables and functions uh, that are being included in the file and hopefully this makes sense. Now moving on here, let's see if, um, if for example, I wanted to access, okay, so if I wanted to include the game from within a function, as I already showed you, we could do this, right? Um, call the function, of course. Okay, so now the name is being outputted to the screen. But if I wanted to access the name from the outside of function, first of all, I would get a notice undefined variable because that variable has functions local scope. So for that, we would need to define uh, the variable as global using the global keyword. So global name. And now if I delete it here, the variable is available from the outside of function. So when we're including <laughs> the another PHP file from inside a function, and we want to access the variables from outside a function, we would use the keyword global to accomplish that. Okay, and um, let's just um, uh, let's see here. So here's what would happen if we just print it out name name by developer Okay so you can see that we are accessing these variables again from within the function which are name and developer and they're being printed out but if we did the same thing from the outside of function, here's what we'll get. Um,
undefined variable name and undefined variable developer but hang on a second name should have been available um echo what the wait it just worked though hmm line 8 Hmm. Global name include game.php echo. Oh, oh my god, I forgot to call the function, of course. So <laughs> make sure you first call the function and then output it because otherwise nothing's gonna happen, of course. So you do need to call the function first then it'll be defined with a global keyword and then include it from the file. Okay, so that's how that works and um, that pretty much sums up um, include and require and uh, once again the the only difference between the two is that include will uh, continue running the script if, if the file is not found and require will give you a fatal error if the file is not found. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it useful. I'll see you next time. Clever Techie out.